There's nothing more fulfilling than turning a blank canvas into a beautiful project that actually helps people. And getting paid to do it as a designer is one of the best things that you can do. If I could go back in time, this is exactly how I would do it. Actually, going back in time is stupid because back when I started, YouTube and all the free resources that are available to you today never existed. So let's talk about how I would learn today. I'm gonna break down this video into three steps that I would take. Step number one, software, which is basically how to actually create things. Step number two is going to be the design skills, which is knowing what you actually want to build and design using the software. And step number three is practice. And we're gonna do this by building an actual project, a side project for ourselves. So let's start with step number one, software. The first software that you're going to need to learn if you wanna be a designer is Photoshop. Now, I know that some people think that Photoshop, Adobe Photoshop is old school and you don't really need that software in order to be a designer today. If you wanna design apps or website, then you can use software like Figma. But trust me when I say that every designer, no matter what you're going to design, will need to manipulate photos. And so you have to master Adobe Photoshop and yes, there are free alternatives which you can master, which are pretty close, but still the industry standard is Adobe Photoshop and you're gonna need to learn things like how to select objects. You're gonna need to clean up backgrounds or separate your uh, subject from the background. You're gonna need to manipulate colors or maybe adjust the white balance of a photo. You're gonna need to add realistic shadows. Those are all things that you will have to do as part of your role as a designer, no matter what you are designing. So this is a great place to get started. The second software that you wanna learn really depends on what it is that you want to design. So if you want to design for screens, things like websites or apps, a great place to start with Figma or alternatively Adobe XD. There are pretty similar and they're both oriented for screen design. Now, when you're gonna learn this software, you will learn how to create different screens to represent different pages of the website or different uh, screens in the app. You will learn how to prototype, which is connecting certain uh, these screens together to represent and show potential clients or team members what will happen when somebody clicks a certain part of the app or the website. And you're gonna need to learn how to use components and styles so that your time building and designing these uh, websites or apps is going to be more efficient. If you wanna design things like brands, that include logos, you're probably going to have to master Adobe Illustrator. Now, yes, you can use things like Figma to create vector shapes, but Adobe Illustrator is still the best program out there to manipulate vector shapes. So if you wanna design logos, you're gonna to have to learn how to use Illustrator so that you'll be able to create and manipulate shapes, uh, a customize type or create some patterns or even adjust uh, different vector illustration, whether you create the illustration or you're downloading other vector illustrations from the web, you will need to know how to edit them and manipulate them. And the best tool to do that is Adobe Illustrator. If you want to be a print designer, which means you will be designing books or business cards or things that are going to be out there in exhibitions or billboards, probably the tool that you will need to use is Adobe InDesign, which is the standard for print, where you will learn how to lay out and create multiple pages and prepare files for print. If you'll be designing websites, you'll probably learn Webflow Next, which is basically how you're gonna take the design that you did in Figma and turn it into a live HTML responsive website that includes interactions and animations. So that would be your next software to learn for the web. If you want to create motion design or animations, After Effect is probably going to be your next tool where you will learn things like keyframing, animation and easing and working with sounds to create nice animation. Now, I did cover a lot of software and this can sound a little bit overwhelming, but don't worry, you only have to start with two. So as I said, start with Photoshop and the next software, depending on what it is that you want to design for your practice project, and we'll get to your practice project in just a minute. The next step is acquiring some design skills which will guide what you even want to create with the software that you just learned. 
Now, there are two processes that you want to understand if you want to be a designer. The first one is design thinking. Now, design thinking is basically kind of an iterative process, which basically means that if you want to design something, first, you need to understand the people that you're designing for. That would help define what the problem is that you're trying to solve with the design that you're working with. After that, you will ideate a bunch of ideas, you will turn them into a prototype, and then you will test them out with the people that you're basically trying to design for. You will get feedback from them and that will guide this iterative process. So design is never actually finished, right? Even when we ship something, this is basically just a, a test to get feedback from the audience and then we will create another iteration. So design is a never ending process and every time we ship something, it's just a new version to test out and then we'll start this design process from scratch. Now the second process is called divergent and convergent thinking. And what this basically means is that every time that we're designing something, the first step is to have a lot of ideas. This is called divergent thinking. So we come up with a lot of different ideas. So let's say you're designing a website, you will come up with maybe a lot of different layouts. And then we turn into convergent thinking, which means we're going to narrow down all the options that we create into choosing just a single option. So we created a bunch of layouts, we're going to pick just one of them. Next step, we're going to diverge again and maybe try out multiple different fonts. So we'll create a lot of options and then we'll pick the one that we want, converge and then try the next thing. So maybe try out a lot of colors. So you will always have this creating a lot of ideas, choosing one of them, diverging and converging. This is how every design project is going to look like. So now that you understand these two processes, you actually have the design skills that you need to master. So you need to start understanding layout, understanding typography, understanding color and understanding working with imagery. How do you learn them? Well, first of all, as I said in the beginning, there are tons of free resources here on YouTube and on the web for you to dive deeper into all of these skills. We're also working in Flux Academy on a core design skill course to cover just these. But one thing that I can kind of a tip that I can give you to just get started is to try to copy good design that you like. And I don't mean just rip people off and you know, show the work as your own. But just as a practice, if you look at designs that you admire, and you try to recreate that with the software that you have just learned, by just noticing and paying attention to the design decision that they have made, wait, what font did they use? What size of the font that they use related to you know, the size of the format. If you pay attention by recreating work from great designers, you will start paying attention to all of those factors that I've just mentioned, like layout, like typography, like color, and you will start to getting a sense of how to work with them. Now, the next thing that you can do and you should probably do is start developing a network of designer friends that you can get feedback from, that you can bounce off ideas and you can ask them, what do they think about your work? Now you can do this here, you know, on YouTube, you can do this on Twitter, you can do this on Instagram, but you want to start creating relationships with other designers, just so that you can start getting feedback from other people. This leads us to step number three, which is practicing what you've learned so far by launching your own side project. A side project is an amazing way to not only practice your design, but actually go through a whole project that your potential clients might actually go through. And when you do it for yourself, you will gain all the experience that will later give you the perspective on how to help them. So I'll give you an example. If you want to work with clients designing websites, how about you launch your own website or some kind of a website? If you want to design books, how about you design and get a book printed? If you want to design brands, how about you launch and create an actual brand? Now I'll give you an example of a project side project that I did a few years ago, which really, really helped me both practice my skill and gain some perspective that was so valuable later on when I was working with clients. I wanted to because I w wanted to work with startups that are building apps, I wanted to build my own app. And so I had this idea of creating an app that would every day send you an inspirational quote. So I started off by designing the app. Now I didn't know how to develop apps. And so I basically took an online course to learn app development. Now there are a lot of very cool no code tools to do that even without coding. But back in the day, I had to learn how to code. I did that I 
coded the app, and then I built the marketing uh, website for it. I did a promotional video for it, and then I launched it. Now, by going through this whole process, going from the concept to the design, to the development, to the mark, thinking about the marketing for it, I gained the perspective of what my potential clients as a startup might run through a project when they're launching their own business. And so by doing this, and by the way, this was a failure. Nobody downloaded my app. I thought I was gonna make money. I didn't make a dollar. So while this uh, app never made any money, I did learn so much of it and I gained a valuable portfolio piece. So I recommend you thinking about the type of clients you wanna work with and then creating a side project that would help you practice your skills while gaining experience in you know, going through what your potential clients or teammates might experience. Now I do wanna say two things that are very important for your success. Number one, software will always change. Some of the software that I mentioned here today didn't even exist when I started off as a designer. So you will always need to refresh or learn new software as you build your career as a designer, but the fundamentals never change. So take your time to dive deep into the core design fundamentals and keep practicing them. And remember that this is a lifelong journey. This is not something that happens after you watch one or two tutorials. This is a practice of a craft. So you will learn and get better with every project that you're working with. And this leads me to the second thing that is really important for you to understand is you will go through a phase where you will hate all of your work. You will think my work sucks. I'm not talented, you will see all the amazing work out there on YouTube or Instagram or whatnot, and you will think, you will know how to recognize that something is amazing, but you won't be able to create the amazing work yourself. And this is very, very common. It happens to everybody. It still happens to me to this day. So this is part of the process. Recognize this. Don't let this discourage you from becoming a great designer and getting paid as a designer. This is just part of the process. And the fact that you are not yet at where you want to be doesn't mean that you can't get started or that you can get paid right now for the skills that you do have right now. So congrats, you now have your first portfolio piece if you've completed your side project. You probably wanna run through the motions of creating a practice project for yourself maybe one or two more times and then you have a portfolio and it's time to look for a job or find some clients and get paid for your new design skills. I'm really excited to see you grow as a designer. As I said in the beginning, I do believe this is one of the best things, professions that people can do today that are not only a great way to make a living, but also very fulfilling and contributing to creating a more beautiful, useful world out there for everybody. So I'm excited to have you as part of the design community, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace out.